Today, we are so heavily reliant on technology. You could see how social media has made it through into the mainstream. There's no question. I've seen many times before where tweets become published, shared thousands upon thousands of times, and then like six hours or 12 hours later, news articles are written about it. And then like the next day, the mainstream will pick it up and actually do a whole thing about it. It. Now, you can see how things have changed because the tweets become the news right as it happens. And then, of course, you got to wait so long to get all that other information through all the red tape and all of this that, you know, legacy businesses have been doing for so long. Now, today we've got a problem, though, because the governments don't like this. The governments don't like that you and I could have the ability to share instantaneously globally they want control that's why they have never been a fan of any form of decentralized payment system they don't like any of it and they want to have control that's what central bank digital currencies are all about they are the ultimate tool of control now in today's video we're going to talk about some changes that are happening right before our very eyes i want you to know that what we're seeing right here is going to look quite dystopian it's going to be something that you're uncomfortable with but i need to bring it to you so sit down relax and let's get into it here we have it why social media is being blamed for fueling riots in france so you have seen what's going on of course there's the looting there's the rioting the protesting there's fires there's all kinds of things happening inside of france it's all over social media and so what they're suggesting here is that it's actually fanning the flames, making things worse because people see it. Hey, they are going in there. They're looting. Oh, that's on fire. OK, the police are attacking there and, and they, it just rallies people up. So the government says, well, if we just cut off the alternative news or the social media during these times, well, we can kind of stop these things from happening. And that kind of reminds me of you know other instances where we've seen this before you get that in a lot of developing countries where riots i don't want to say they're common but they do happen protests major major protests with tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of people that just show up on the street and they protest about one issue or another and what do they do they cut off the internet and we've seen that a lot so now to suggest that it could happen inside of you know a place like france in the us and canada and other places it is not only possible it is very likely and so there are maybe ways around it where you can try to use a vpn because they block a particular website or app ultimately they have the like the highway for the information and they can simply cut off the data they can cut off the data now, if you had something like a Starlink satellite, that would enable you to communicate regardless if your country cut off the communications. So we do have options, but that again puts the reliance on the satellite transmission and what they're enabling. But I want you to know that you do have options. Some of that might be on a backup, right? Maybe you have a Starlink satellite as a backup system to your actual you know services that you use it could be something to think about and so we're maybe not in that position yet you might not have to be concerned yet but we've already seen what social media companies will do whether it was at the request of government or not they will enable or disable you they will prevent you from saying what you want and even right now i gotta be a little cryptic but I've said so much over the years, the account has already been, I don't want to say shadow banned, I, I dealt with shadow banning previously, but it is what they call visibility filtered, okay? So it's not going to show up in search engines, it's not going to show up uh, for content for other new viewers, but you can, you can see this. Um, so the point here is that we are going to see further changes that occur, including this. This is talking about... Well, let me just read it for you. 
in a sharp spotlight on the interplay between national security and individual privacy, newly disclosed, disclosed documents have unveiled that the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, entered into a contract with the University of Alabama at Birmingham, UAB, in 2018 to develop a project dubbed, quote, Night Fury, designed to analyze and assign risk scores to social media accounts. You see that? And this is already going on anyway. Because even what we've found with Twitter, a lot of people will will you know say things about Twitter and this and that. But what we did find out, which I thought was incredible, was the different levels of visibility filtering. And so there was all kinds of different flags and tags that accounts could have, some of which weren't even visible to the moderators. So it was like, depending on what level you were at, you knew about different things that were on people's accounts. And they would email, there were emails found about, you know, oh, what are we going to do about this account and that account? So it's like, it's not like just some AI system. There was actual human involvement in the circumstances. And that's just really, really irks me because of everything that I started talking about this in like probably 2015. Okay, I'm like, hey, everybody, I don't know what's going on, but my video's not showing up. I didn't know what a, what a shadow ban was. I didn't know any, I didn't know the terms. I didn't know anything. I just knew because I tested everything that, hey, isn't it weird when I do a cat video that certain things would be okay, but then when I did like my normal videos, things were really not, like something was weird about it. And then people would say like, why is this guy making cat videos? That, I was testing the algorithm. I was testing the algorithm and it was very clear. If you make videos about cats, you're a okay. You go through the system. But if you're making any other type of video about the Federal Reserve and so on, you get put into this cage. So I've been talking about this for you know at least eight years and documenting it along the way. Maybe I haven't mentioned everything, but I've been testing, believe me, the algorithm. And so the whole point here is that you're going to say something, or maybe you've already said it, and they're simply going to limit what you have access to. And I don't think people understand the serious consequences here. Because you might have been saying something one time to somebody, and it might not have been a big deal to you. But it was a big deal to somebody else, and now suddenly you can't go on vacation. Maybe suddenly you have a lower social credit score. They've already done this in a certain country. And so we know this. We know how this will end, and it's not ending well. Vietnam tells foreign social media to use AI to detect toxic content. They will all do this, just like what's happening in France, I believe, certainly, that they're just going to continue to label more and more and more content as bad, and so, you know, I think that the real bad stuff, the stuff that I don't even want to talk about, you know, it seems like it proliferates. But when we want to just speak our mind on certain subjects, we can't. And so we know what the agenda is. Google will remove Canadian news from search over new law. Alphabet's move comes after Meta pulled content from Facebook. Government hoped to ease revenue woes for local outlets. This is, um, you know, just something that was going back and forth, back and forth uh, about what the news really is. But the honest truth is that uh, there's really only in the financial world, there's really only basically two, maybe like three sources of information. All, all of that. I, I think it's funny when some, oh yeah, you know, you, you think you're creative, you know, the people will, will complain about anything. There's Reuters, there's Bloomberg, and there's CNBC. Pretty much all financial news comes from these three sources. Okay, there's the Financial Times, there's other, other the Wall Street Journal, and so on. But like, when we're talking about the news, like the info that comes out, it comes through those three sources. Almost all. And really, Bloomberg pretty much gets it all. Reuters is more uh, Europe. So we could see that. Anyway, the point here is that they have so much control over the media. And I've talked about this for probably a decade, that the internet, which we are basically going to now, 
uh, will not be this open and free internet. Okay, we're going to the, what I call internet 2.0, although we're like 3.0 or who knows 4.0. Um, I call it internet 2.0, where it's basically a, um, a, a paid service. You are gatekept at every level. You don't get to speak your mind. It's not open. You you know you, every website is going behind the paywall now. This is the way. This is the Internet 2.0. You use everything through an app. You're not on an open website. Information is harder to come by and so on. Anyway, I just, you know, I, I'm just trying to not speculate because this, this is really happening. It's happening. Musk says Twitter will limit how many tweets users can read. Um, if you look at the numbers, I thought it was funny because people are really complaining, say it's, hey, it's about censorship. It's like, can you read 8,000 tweets in a day or whatever the number is? Like, it's not even realistic. Like, um, so there are these bots that go out there and they want to stop that. And I don't see an issue with this. If they limit what people can say, that's a different story. But, you know, they'll use anything they want because it connects in with this. Why Meta is launching Twitter rival called Threads. So uh, all of the people that um, were very upset that Elon Musk took, took over Twitter are looking for an alternative. There's really nothing good out there for them. Um, so they said, all right, well, what about Zuck? Zuck creates basically Instagram without the pictures, it looks like. And uh, they just are going to launch that. I'm sure it's going to do very well because they can get a good bunch of the people from twitter who don't like twitter and they can just move over and you could take all your instagram users if they got a million users on instagram suddenly you got a million users on this new thing threads there's a lot happening here and you could just see on these different levels i just think that social media in general is uh, really more advanced in a way but the governments can force them to squeeze them and do whatever they please that's just the a simple matter of fact Okay, uh, this one here, I gotta do a whole video about this. JP Morgan has been fined $4 million by America's securities watchdog, the SEC, for deleting millions of emails records dating back to 2018 related to its Chase Bank subsidiary. Uh, you know, they accidentally deleted 47 million electronic communications. You know, the point here, I mean, the reason I mention this here is that the government will not allow you to talk about something that, in my opinion, should be allowed to talk. You know, you should be able to share what you want, even if it's terrible. And yet, when some dirty business is going on, they'll allow JP Morgan to delete 47 million emails. Do you see what I'm saying? Anyway. I think it's important right now more than ever before that we realize what's happening. We see the writing on the wall. We better get our stuff in order. And that means one of those things is that we make extra income on the side. I talked about the Starlink satellite. There's probably alternatives. We got to look at our own power source, grow a garden in your backyard, do whatever it takes. This video right here is talking about how you can earn some extra income on the side. Click it and I'll see you there.